And now let's talk about Israel. The country has come under fire from all sides, friends and foes. Four here means Iran, primarily. On Monday, the Iranian embassy complex in Syria was attacked. Iran blames Israel for the attack. Their supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, has vowed revenge. He says Israel will be quote-unquote slapped, whatever that means. But more than Iran, Israel might be worried about its allies. Israel attacked an aid convoy on Monday night on purpose. It killed seven aid workers from the charity called World Central Kitchen. They were distributing food to starving people in Gaza, and this has caused an uproar in the West. The United Nations has called it a potential war crime. But the biggest pressure is coming from the U.S., where Joe Biden has finally issued an ultimatum. Here's our report. Sunday will mark six months of the war on Gaza, six months since Hamas attacked Israel, and the retaliation that has followed. Over 33,000 Palestinians are dead. Hamas still holds about 100 hostages. A ceasefire is nowhere in sight. And Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu seems no closer to his aim of eradicating Hamas. With no tangible gains to show, Netanyahu seems to be going the other way, angering friends and foes alike with his indiscriminate attacks. Monday was an especially chaotic day. The Iranian embassy in Syria's capital, Damascus, was bombed. Twelve people were killed, including two Iranian generals. Iran believes Israel is responsible. Israel has not claimed responsibility yet, but this was Netanyahu on Thursday. For years, Iran has been working against us directly and through its proxies. And therefore, Israel is working against Iran and its proxies, both defensively and offensively. We will know how to defend ourselves and we will act according to the simple principle that whoever hurts us or plans to hurt us, we will hurt them. Not a direct admission of guilt, but pretty close. This failure of the Israeli regime in Gaza will definitely continue as well as these desperate efforts like what they did in Syria. Of course, they will be slapped for this action. That is Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, Iran's supreme leader. He has received the remains of his generals. He personally led a prayer for them today. The Ayatollah has vowed revenge. What could that mean? The CIA reportedly thinks an Iranian attack is imminent. Yesterday, it had warned Israel of an attack within 48 hours, which is why this is the worst time for Israel to have angered its friends as well. Monday wasn't just the day of the embassy strike. That's also when foreign aid workers in Gaza were killed by Israel. Seven people working for a charity called World Central Kitchen, a charity founded by celebrity chef Jose Andres. This is what he had to say. Well, uh, at the end is what we know, what everybody knows. Uh, that seven team members between the special uh, specialty security people we have, three British individuals and three uh, three international crew plus one Palestinian, that they were targeted systematically, car by car. He says Israel systematically targeted the aid workers. It wasn't an accident. So the West is outraged. I spoke uh, to President Biden yesterday. President Biden made a statement, which seems is already uh, a harder stand. Biden has finally taken a harder stand. He called Netanyahu yesterday and issued an ultimatum. Reduce civilian casualties or lose American aid. It may not sound like much of an ultimatum, but it seems to be working. Israel is opening up more border crossings. It is also going to allow more aid into Gaza to provide food to the starving civilians there. It's not the end of the war, but it's something. Biden and the West have finally wrapped Netanyahu on the knuckles, so he's backing down for now. But will this be a turning point, or will things go back to how they were after public attention fades?